Hi everybody, welcome back to Everyday Through the Living. It's Cass and it's time to see what Amazon has in store for us this month. If you did not know this, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you pay that monthly fee or that yearly fee, you get the opportunity to pick one free book every month that is due, well, that, do, that is due to come out the following month. So all these books that I'm about to show you will be coming out on June 1st. So this month we have eight books. And yes, I know I already redeemed my book because I'll explain later as we go through along so we have eight books to choose from these are the eight books i know i went through it quickly so let's get right into the first book the first book is called a killer's game by daniela Ve not by daniela vega by isabella maldonado it is the first book in the daniela vega series and pretty much this is the book that i picked so it is 365 pages long and here we go so pretty much FBI agent cryptography, cat and mouse type game. Uh, FBI agent and former military code breaker Daniela Danny Vega witnesses a murder on a Manhattan sidewalk. The victim is chief of staff for a powerful New York senator. The assassin turned informant is Gustavo Toro. His code, hit the target and don't ask questions. When Danny suspects a complex conspiracy, the only way to take down the mastermind is from inside, forcing her to partner with Toro. Together, they must infiltrate the inner circle at a remote facility. Except it's a trap for all of them. Locked in a sub subterranean labyrinth and held captive by an unseen host, Danny, Toro, and others must fight for their lives. Now Danny must stay undercover, unravel a bizarre conspiracy, and survive lethal puzzles. But will Toro be a friend or a foe? Because in this killer's game, everything is real. The paranoia, the des desperation, and the body count. And the only person who can... Only one person can make it out alive. So yes, I did pick this book. Let's get into the rest of the choices for this month. The next book is The Light on Farallon Island by Jen Wheeler. This is a historical mystery thriller suspense type book. 358 pages and it is a debut from her. So... 30 miles off the coast of San Francisco lie the Farallon Islands, known to sailors as the Devil's Teeth. Despite their fearsome reputation, their remote nature appeals to young Lucy Riley, who in 1859 seeks a new start as a teacher to the lighthouse keeper's children. But Lucy brings treacherous secrets with her, including a name that isn't hers and a, hers and a past she can't escape. On the island, she meets Will Sisson, a mysterious man who seems to recognize her name, but not her face. Wary of Will at first, Lulu, Lulu. <laughs> Lucy slowly starts to trust him. As Lucy embeds herself in the island's community, she discovers numerous dangers, deadly cliffs, shark-infested waters, and disorienting fogs. A dark presence of another sort, too, disguises as an encroaching threat. In this forbidding place, Lucy must find the courage to confront the perils of her past and the ever-present dangers of the world around her for, her, for the new life she sought to finally begin. This book I will admit, this book does sound really good, and it's a book that I will probably be putting to the side to remember, because this does sound really good. Uh, the next book, now this is the reason why I have, this is the second time I have filmed this, is because the first time I filmed this, this book was available, but then a few hours later, for some reason, Amazon actually removed this book from the selection, so I was in the process of refilming it, and then they brought it back. Uh, I suspect it had may have something to do with maybe... Uh, Maybe some editing issues, or maybe there was something in the book they had to remove. So I do not know. So it is called Don't Say a Thing, A Predator, A Pursuit, and The Women Who Persevered by uh, Tamara Leitner. It is 461 pages. It is a true crime biography memoir type book, and it is about assault. So it's a subject that's like, mm, you know. So... In April 1999, reporter Tamara Leitner woke to an active crime scene outside her Arizona apartment. Her neighbor had been brutally assaulted by a man who will later be identified as Claude Dean Hull II, a serial rapist who, had escaped, who has escaped justice for decades. New identities, new states, new victims, more than 100 suspected across the country, and thousands more victimized in myriad ways. Tamara's 20-year compulsion to follow the investigation began. She needed to question a failed system, she needed to know the women whose lives were irrevocably altered, and she needed to face the root of her reception with Hull and his crimes. In interviewing, befriending, and profoundly connecting with his survivors, she crafts a unique true crime narrative. It not only reveals the struggles of the justice system to help victims of sexual violence, but explores how resilient how these resilient women and Tamara herself strove to reclaim their power in the wake of indelible trauma. Let's go on to the next book. 
This is actually a short story. Um, it is only 53 pages. It's called Golden Hills, a short story by Jennifer Weiner. And she's a New York Times bestselling author. I think I've heard of her before. I feel like I've seen her book in like my local library years back. Senatorial favorite Ida Berkowitz is headed for a win. Raised by a hardworking widowed mother, she's authentic, relatable, and down to earth. Voters love her. Polls promise victory. Then her campaign manager utters four awful words. Who is Marissa Schuyler? She had almost managed to forget Ida's bunkmate at Camp Golden Hills when they were girls. Marissa was confident, sophisticated, and wealthy. Everything Ida wasn't. Now the polished wife of a major conservative donor, Marissa's announced a press conference about Ida. Just like that, Ida's old insecurities come rushing in. So do new feelings of dread. After all these years, she knows what's on Marissa's mind. It could undermine everything Ida's worked for because it isn't very pretty. Now, I remember when I first read this description, I didn't like it. There was something... There's something off about this description. It almost reads like, like this is the story itself. It's I don't know. It was just one of those weird things. And on top of that, it's a short story, and I'm not really interested in reading short stories this month. And it is odd for Amazon to offer a short story in what you know in a in these picks. Let's go to the next book. This book is called. A Thousand Recipes for Revenge by Beth Cato. This is book one of two. So the first in a series of the Chefs of the Five Gods series. 406 pages long. This is uh, fantasy, action, adventure, sci-fi. Adamantine Ada Garland has an empath empathic connection to food and wine, a magical perception of aromas, flavors, and ingredients. Invaluable property of the royal court, Ada was in service to the five gods and to the gods ordained rulers of Verdania, until she had enough of injustice and bloodshed and deserted, seeking to chart her own destiny. When mysterious assassins ferret her out after 16 years in hiding, Ada, now a rogue chef, and her beloved Grand Mere run for their lives, only to find themselves on a path toward an unexpected ally. A foreign princess in a strange court, so unknowingly shares more with Ada than an Epicurean gift. They share blood. With her newfound magical perception, she becomes aware of a plot to kill her fiancé, the prince. It's part of a plot by adversarial forces in the rival country of Albion to sow conflict, and Solon is set up to take the blame. As Ada's and Solon's paths converge, mother, a mother and a long-lost daughter reunite toward a common goal and against a shadowy enemy from Ada's past who is out for revenge. But what sacrifices must be made? What hope is there when powerful gods pick sides in a war similar to eruption? Now, I remember when I first read this, I had a, had a horrible time getting through all the, all the weird words and everything. But I also mentioned that the revelation that their mother and daughter, I feel like, should not have been mentioned in the description. This does sound really interesting. Um, again, like I said, I picked the other book. This one is called, the next one is called The Silent Bride by Shalini Boland. This is 267 pages. It is a literature fiction, but as you can see, it is women's psychological fiction. So, Alice and Seth are a perfect love story. The handsome doctor and his beautiful fiance. They're wealthy, well-liked, and made for each other. The envy of all their friends. Alice can't wait for the day of their dream wedding. When she arrives at the altar, she doesn't recognize the man waiting for her, waiting to marry her. When the stranger insists he's Seth, her husband-to-be, the entire congregation seems to agree. Even her parents try to persuade Alice to go through with the wedding. As panic sets in, Alice's world comes apart. Where is the real Seth, and why have all traces of him disappeared from her life? Fearing she's losing her mind, she sets out to uncover the truth and escape the nightmare she's living in. But with everyone around her convinced by the fake Seth, how can she ever hope to find the man she loves? Um, this one I thought she might have been, she might be, be gaslighted. You know, she may be, you know... But, um, it sounded interesting, but at the same time, I was like, mm, I don't know. The next book is called The Road Towards Home by Corinne DeMoss. This is a women's friendship fiction book, and, uh, 283 pages. And I remember this book because one of the main characters has my name in it, and I'm always weirded out with characters, with books that have my name as, like, one of the main characters. I'm just, that's just me. Uh, widower Noah Schilling considers Clarion Court to be less an independent living community and more a prison, but there may be hope for the place yet. The newest resident is bold, eccentric, rule-breaking Cassandra Joyce, my name, whom, as it turns out, Noah met long ago in college. As Noah and Cassandra get reacquainted, major changes at Clarion Court force them both to reevaluate their living situation. 
when no one invites Cassandra to rough it out with him at his Cape Cod cottage, the old friends must decide whether they should risk embarking on the next stage of their journey together. But moving forward, moving forward, moving forward means coming to terms with the past and relying on each other to do so, which is something the stubbornly independent pair may not be ready for. They've come this far on their own, and unless they can reconcile a lifetime of emotional baggage, the road they started down together may lead instead to parted ways. And last but not least, it is You Look Beautiful Tonight by L.R. Jones. This is a domestic thriller. This is pretty much you in a different form. Like a secret admirer type thing, although technically that's what you would be also. Uh, Mia Anderson is an invisible woman, an unremarkable 32-year-old Tennessee librarian. She's accustomed to disappearing in a crowd, unseen and unheard. Then she receives an anonymous note. You look beautiful today. It doesn't stop there. The attentive stranger, a secret admirer named Adam, has plans for Mia. With each new text comes a, suge uh, comes a suggestion for her hair, clothes, or attitude. And for the first time in memory, Mia feels noticed. Slowly, she develops a confidence in herself she's never had, but Adam has a surprise coming, and Mia finally sees him for who he is and what he's prepared to do for her, even kill. Fearing she could be implicated in the murder, she's forced, forced to turn to the stranger, in the shadows watching her every move. Adam's game of cat and mouse begins with Mia as the prey. In order to survive, she must, become, must also become the predator. Now, this book did sound good, but like I said, as I said earlier, in the end, I did choose A Killer's Game by Isabella Maldonado because when I initially read it, it had a um, Squid Games type effect, and that really, really interested me. Um, if you're interested in, like, historical mysteries, thrillers, then The Light on Farallon Island might be for you. Uh, if you're interested, if you're right now interested in true crime, you want to read something along those lines, you could read this, although the subject matter might be too much for met for some people. It is for me in at times. If you're interested in a quick read, Golden Hills would be your, your best bet. If you're interested in sci-fi fantasy, at sci-fi fantasy, if you're in that, if you want that genre, then definitely go for Chefs of the Five Gods. This one, if you're interested in that psychological stuff, is she being gaslighted? Is she losing her mind? That type of thriller, psychological stuff. Then, yes, definitely check this book out. Or if you've read Shalini Bolan's books before because she is the best-selling author of The Secret Mother, I've never read any of her work. So, if you're interested in, like, friendship fiction, that type of stuff, contemporary fiction, then... Definitely check out The Road Towards Home. I've never read Corinne de Moss. This is not the type of uh, genre that I gravitate to. And if you're a huge fan of you, which I love that show. It's probably one of the favorite shows. I have yet to see the la the, the fourth season, so don't spoil anything for me. Uh, then definitely check this book out. Or at least keep it on the back burner if you're interested in several of these books. Because remember, they do come out on June 1st. And you can easily buy the paperback. And it looks like the paperback for a lot of these books are um, relatively inexpensive. $12.78, which is cheaper on Amazon than if you go to a Target or a Walmart. So that is going to be it for us today. I will be reading Isabella Maldonado's A Killer's Game. So stay tuned for, those re for that review. And stay tuned for my TBR. I will be reading my books from the TBR this month. Um... I'm fighting through that anxiety, just fighting through it, and uh, I will win. I will win. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and um, let me know down below, if you're an Amazon Prime member, what book did you pick? What books are you interested in picking up from these, from this melange of picks? keep saying that. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.